Hello guys, gals, and other pills, and welcome. Well, it's been a while, about one and a half years, I think. And I'm neither dead nor in an institution. So that's a win, I guess. Even though there were a few things in my life that stopped me from doing chemistry. But now let's just say I'm back. And how about I start by renovating my old lab. So, here is my lab how it hopefully once was. Oh god, I really hope I can finish it. Or well, maybe I will just have another panic attack and give up. We'll see. But if you see this video right now, the chances of me actually having finished all of it also is pretty high. So, now, why do I want to renovate this wonderful little lab here? Well, how it stands, it has a multitude of fun and interesting features. Like, for example, a hole in the wall. Exposed wiring. Misspelled chemical waste. Of course, the ever-present, always-expanding presence in the room. Mold. A lot of mold. Jesus fucking Christ. This stuff should be fine for an amateur chemistry lab. But like you will see, I'm already far beyond that. Also, I want to start doing bio stuff. Like yeast and fungal cultures. And for this I need a little bit more clean environment. Definitely a cleaner one than this here. So yeah. But before we tear it all down, let me quickly give you a look around. And also a quick look behind the camera. So now, this is what's usually behind the camera. Here are a few power tools from my dad. So now, let's go to my stuff. Starting with this wonderful cabinet here. Like you can see, I have a lot of chemicals. These here are just solvents and some liquid reagents. Now here I have a bunch of glassware, like simple glassware containers, round bottom flasks, all my flask with ground joints. So now let's move further to the left, or the right, uh, I'm not too sure. So here I have a bunch of my beakers, gas washing bottles, non-ground Erlmeyer flasks, and a bunch of volumetric stuff on top here. Also here, there is my wonderful 5 liter round bottom flask, and a bunch of funnels and petri dishes. Here is also just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff, like paper, aluminium foil, plastic wrap, gloves, lighters, etc. Here I have all my condensers, fractionating columns, my burette, glass pipes, quartz glass pipes, and a multitude of other things. Also my thermometers, yeah. And now, here is the moment you've all been waiting for. Here's the majority of all my solid chemicals. It's quite a lot. This entire cabinet is already overflowing. I have a lot of sulfates, nitrates, hydroxides, carbonates, also oxides, organic reagents, S miscellaneous stuff, organic, organic acid salts, esters, uh, nitrogen compounds. I'll need to sort through all of them when I finally get all of this out to replace it with a new one. And now, lastly, in this corner of the room is my fume hood, with a lot of chemical waste stack on top and a lot of other miscellaneous stuff. So yeah, underneath my fumet I also have this little cabinet filled with a lot of fun stuff. I have a large amount of glass fittings, glass adapters, 
for different sizes, gas adapters for vacuum, for temperature gauges, drying tubes, also like pinchers, spoons, stoppers, stir rods, stir bars, cramps, and everything like that. Here I have a lot more goodies. For example, a 500 milliliters pressure equalizing addition funnel, small addition funnel, separatory funnels, vacuum filters, adapters, and this very nice vacuum distillation apparatus. So, in here I mostly store my inorganic acids, but also some organic ones like acetic acid, formic acid, etc. Down there I also have nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid, hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, hydrobromic acid I think, yeah. And on the left here I have my elemental collection. Chrome, silver, mercury, a whole lot of fucking mercury, iodine, bromine, gallium, carbon, sulfur, bismuth, yeah, pretty much everything you can think about. And now down here is just some heating mantles, vacuum pumps, and also a few gas burners. The first part is of course clearing all the stuff from the fume hood. Starting with the things I stored on top of it. I made sure to wrap up all of the glassware in tissues in order to keep them safe. After that I disassembled the fume hood. To be honest, this was kinda sad because I built it years ago and used it ever since. But the moment I was able to destroy things, it became a lot of fun. I sadly had to quickly realize that the fume hood is actually really really heavy. So it took me quite a while to disassemble. The lower part was much easier to get rid of and I was allowed to use violence. <laughs> I like beating things with hammers. Of course, after making a mess, it needed to get cleaned up. After that, I started clearing and disassembling the workbench. And now here you can see nearly my entire laboratory in boxes. After the old furniture was removed, it was of course time to build new ones. Those were made out of wood. The entire process of building it was pretty difficult to film. So I only documented a few steps. Also it was pretty boring. So that's how the fume hood is looking so far. It has nice drawers and a lot of storage space. I also decided to put on this dark wood varnish on it. I think it looks very good. But you might notice that there's still something missing about this fume hood. And that is the fume hood. So I'm going to make the main part out of stainless steel. And stainless steel is pretty much a pain in the ass to work with. So I saved the worst for last. 
<sighs> but now that the time has come, I have to go and get it done. It took me nearly an hour to hammer the stainless steel trough into shape. Luckily, the welding went easier. Well, that was fucking hell, and I'm not even completely finished with the stainless steel here. I still need to make a big hole here for the air to get sucked in. In addition, I also need to install lighting and install some electricity here. So yeah, that's gonna be fun. Fuck me. I hate drilling holes into stainless steel, so mounting the plates was hell. The electric part was really easy though, installing lights, power outlets, and also the cable that goes outside to the blower motor. An important thing to take care of was the suction that even makes the fume hood work. This consisted of routing air pipes onto the roof of my lab and then putting the motor on it. In a little box of course in order to protect it from the elements. After this the fume hood was crudely tested by burning stuff inside. The last and also very important part was installing the rack into the fume hood. And after adding all of the stuff back I was able to call it complete. Mostly. Building the laboratory workbench was pretty much the same. I started by firstly constructing the rough frame and then added the same dark wood stain. After that I added boards for the work area which I left unpainted and unstained because I kinda like the look of it. Next side panels, drawers and cabinet doors were added and that was about it. Well, to be honest, that wasn't it. I still needed to put back all of the glassware, random stuff and chemicals. Especially the chemicals took quite a while because I had to sort all of them. The last step of getting my lab into usable shape was getting electricity back in. Even if just crudely, because I'm still missing a bit of stuff to complete my lab. As a quick warning, don't do your own electrical installations in a room. If your insurance provider finds out, they might just be able to completely deny you any payout. I have professional training when it comes to electrical installations. So I kind of know what I'm doing, for the most part. Here I have a liter of black tea. This means I'll either get the electrics of this room mostly usable tonight, or I'll die of a heart attack. Exciting! Cheers! So now the fumot has electricity. I'm not too sure where I want to put the switches yet, 
so I just left them hanging from the ceiling. I wish that would be me. And now here is my renovated lab. Of course there's still a lot of stuff to do. But that's all for part 2. So I hope you liked this video and see you hopefully soon. Bye!